What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of She or They with Kittens. I'm Kittens, and today is a she, her, me episode. I think I'm just going to call them that whenever it's just solo vibes, so we'll stick with it, and you know what it's going to be about. Um, before we get into today's episode, make sure you like and subscribe and follow and click all the buttons. Come find me on Instagram at she, her, they, or at I am kittens. Go hit the mailing list, which is on the website, www.sheherthey.com because I send all kinds of fun stuff between episodes, early access things, announcements and whatnot. So you definitely want to, uh, go do that and turn your notifications on. But I'm just excited. Um, I feel like there's been so much happening in my life that I haven't like fully talked about on here. So I figured I'd do a little like update situation. And uh, last week I had Sarah Shahi on with me who like that was just such an amazing conversation. If you haven't watched that, go go watch that after this or before this, whatever. But it really got me thinking about a lot of stuff where I was just like, I just kind of want to expand on this and, you know, just just unload a bit. So we're going to get into that. Um, And yeah, is there any other like general housekeeping stuff? I'm trying to think. I think we're good. I think we're good. So in last week's episode, Sarah said something that really resonated with me. And it was kind of like her advice slash, I don't know motto that kept her moving along when she was having a hard time or feeling like she was being too much of a people pleaser and avoiding conflict and just avoiding situations that might be uncomfortable or scary or vulnerable. And she said, speak up even if your voice shakes. And I I think that's a quote from somebody else, but I had never heard it before. And it really hit me because I'm kind of the same my whole life I've been very much a codependent people pleaser where I was so worried about what other people would think what might make them uncomfortable what about me might make them uncomfortable and kind of like trying to to mask parts of myself and hide parts of myself so that other people would be more at ease and over the last however many years I've slowly gotten better at trying to not overthink and trying to not hide parts of myself. And I actually realized, I I, I don't know if I've talked about this anywhere, but um, I got diagnosed with ADHD and I'm, I'm in my thirties. So like a little bit late, but it was something that actually during um, all the lockdown stuff, I feel like it was going viral on TikTok and everyone was talking about their these struggles they were having, or maybe it was just my algorithm algorithming and it was showing me all this stuff about ADHD. And I was like, Oh my God, like this is me. Like I struggle with all these things. I didn't know that's what I didn't know. That's what ADHD was. And one of those things involves masking. And that is literally just like analyzing your environment or the people that you're around and trying to kind of edit yourself, edit parts of yourself, censor parts of yourself, or amplify the things that you think people maybe like, put put those in more in the front and the things that you think they might not like, put them, put them in the back behind, behind the curtains, you know? And that was something that I realized, like, I've been doing my whole life, like my, literally my whole life. And it really, like, that is so exhausting. I never knew why I was so shy and introverted and exhausted after social interactions because I was just constantly having to be like checking what I was showing people, what I was doing, being like, did did I talk too much? Did I talk too little? Was I too loud? Was I not funny enough? Is this part of me weird? Is this part cool? Do I think this person will think this part is cool or this part? Maybe I'll do more of that. Like I was just constantly without even conscious, constantly, but not consciously. Yeah. I was thinking of all these things and it, it just burnt me out. It completely burnt me out. And when it came to the point of kind of researching and understanding what ADHD was, I was like, 
okay, this theme, this thing seems like a very, like, this seems like it is really a thing for me. But I was scared to even talk about it because number one, I'm like, okay, great. Everybody thinks they have ADHD now, according to doctors. And they're all like eye rolling. And I was so scared of sharing what I had struggled with and being vulnerable about that to, you know, my family or my friends or my therapist or a doctor that I need a diagnosis from. I was so scared to open up about that because I was scared of being judged. I was scared of being like, I guess, rejected and having them like, I like, you know, kind of side eye and be like, oh, you're, you're not struggling with that because on the outside, it seems like I've got my life together to at least to a lot of people. Maybe you think my life's a mess. It is a mess. But a lot of people around me have always thought that I've had my shit together and that I don't struggle and that, you know, everything comes to me easily. And like, that's, you know, that's a whole thing that I've had to deal with. And so when I do actually get the courage to share, like when I am struggling and what I do struggle with, when I do get that courage The fear of being judged or having somebody even be like side-eyeing me or something or maybe not embracing it or embracing me and accepting me in a positive way, like that feeling makes me so, so sick. So that's always why I've just kind of kept it to myself and tried to worry about other people's feelings. And when I got the courage up to, you know, tell my girlfriend, like, I think I think this is a thing. I think this reason is why I struggle with X, Y, Z. I think this is why I have trouble with, you know, making decisions and procrastinating and getting really overwhelmed in social situations. Why I need so much alone time because everything is so loud in my head all the time. Why I need so much silence. And I'm always like walking around with headphones on just to have more quiet because like I don't need any more stimulation. Like all all of these things that have kind of, been a thing my whole life that I've learned sort of how to deal with but like it's it's a big project to deal with these things so once I finally got the courage up to do that and speak my truth and raise my voice even if it shakes it was so like freeing you know it was so freeing for me to share share that and at least be able to express these things that were maybe hard for me and were scary. And the more I did that, I realized I didn't, I didn't need other people's validation. I didn't need them to be like, yeah, I agree. This is what you struggle with. Or it's so great. You figured that out. Like I, I didn't need that because by being honest and validating myself by sharing what I was feeling, that was enough. And that made it so much like less stressful and easier to be open. And, you know, if you're not judging yourself, then other people judging you kind of doesn't matter, you know, like it doesn't hit the same if you're not as concerned with what other people think. But I find that something that so many people really have a hard time with, speaking up, being vulnerable, sharing parts of themselves that they think might make people uncomfy. And I really, really, really feel, especially after my talk with Sarah, it's such a huge difference to just be vulnerable because you take so much off your plate too. Like, you don't have to emotionally dump on people. I'm not saying that. Don't do that. Um, But just being, like, vulnerable and honest when you're in a safe space, because I get it sometimes, you know, the people that we want to share with, they maybe are not safe. You really have to use your discretion there, obviously. But being open about that stuff makes such a massive difference. And if I could give anybody any advice, it's to at least start with being honest with yourself and being vulnerable with yourself because so often we just kind of ignore what we're feeling because we don't like it. I know a lot of people compartmentalize and try to ignore when something uncomfortable comes up even in themselves. So why are they going to share it with somebody else? But that's that's another thing that's so important is just being honest with yourself first 
and then you're able to share that with other people. So even if you are in a situation that's maybe not safe to be super vulnerable and open with the people around you, maybe, you know, you are coming to terms with your sexuality or your gender or something and you're scared to tell your family. It's okay to be scared to tell your family, but at least tell yourself. Start with telling yourself because being honest with yourself about those things that are scary and make your voice shake, it feels so much better. It feels so much better. And it's just like, why judge yourself when you don't have to? You should be your own safe space. So that's something that I really want people to take with them is just being your own safe space, being vulnerable, being honest with yourself and with others who are safe to do so with. Okay, and now that that's out of the way, sorry for my like little emotional breakdown there. Um, but we need to also talk about the Sarah Shahi interview because I like, if you didn't watch the L word or you don't know what it is somehow, the L word is like sex in the city or like, I feel like that's the most impactful, like sex in the city or like the Sopranos or whatever, but for queer women, like it is a show from the 2000s, like the mid to late 2000s that was so impactful. It was the first solid representation of any kind we had. And it was like, I think six seasons. I just keep watching them. So like, I just let the episodes roll. So I don't even remember. I think it's six seasons, maybe seven. Pretty sure it's six. Anyways, that show was so impactful. And I started watching it when I was 15. Like I, I wasn't, I didn't even know what a lesbian was. So having the show was very eye opening for me and helped me kind of come to terms with my gender and my sexuality and, you know, who I was and my identity and all that. And it was also my first introduction to seeing a woman DJ, like Sarah Shahi's character. She played Carmen on The L Word, who was a DJ and a lesbian DJ. And I just like, that just sat with me, obviously, you know, because here we are. But that that show was such a trip and i ended up finding out that this was she when she got the role of carmen she didn't know that it was a lesbian role like that like she didn't know shane was going to be a girl and she hadn't really ever experienced like queer women in that way before and their first set like on their first shoot day was an intimate scene between the two of them and so i was like oh my God, I can't even imagine having that kind of intense, like really throwing you in the deep end kind of moment there in that kind of show, in that kind of setting at that age. Like she was, she was pretty young still too. And it just really threw me. I was like, oh my God. But it got me thinking about when I first met her, which was so funny because we actually met at a pride event in Chicago, like years ago, and she was hosting and I was DJing. And I was trying to keep it together, like playing it cool, whatever, like, oh, I'm not fanning out. But inside I was like, oh my God, this is the person that like really, like, I, like I saw myself in her when I was young. So I felt like I could be me kind of thing. And it came so full circle because she was hosting and like on the mic and it was a huge event with like a fucking ton of people. But I was DJing and she came out and was like, you know, dancing next to me and like had her arm around me and like, we just, you know, we were being cool homies while I was DJing. And it was such a full circle moment because I'm like, oh my God, I'm here DJing this event as a gay girl. And also she's Persian and I'm Persian. So that that was a whole other layer to it. And so I was like there with her and I was like, oh my God, this is just like the, the person that I, you know, really inspired a lot of me and myself and figuring out myself and, you know, feeling like it was okay to be myself. It's just here with me. You know what I mean? I, it was such a trip. So I was... I was just so excited to talk to her. So I'm really, really grateful that she came on and shared so much wisdom with me. And she's, I think she's in her early forties. She's in her early forties. So she's got like a little extra wisdom on me. And I'm just like, that really, that really added so much value for me. And I feel like listening to people who have different life experiences Obviously, you know, listen to people who are older than you because they've lived more and they they have better advice usually. But that one, just like the speak up, even though your voice shakes or even when your voice shakes, 
that was so it's like throw it on the pile of stuff that Sarah Shahi's done to inspire me and impact my life just like chuck that in that giant pile because it's too valuable it's too valuable to forget I feel like I need to tattoo it on my eyelids so I just like never never forget about that but that's something that from her episode and my life experience and just everything that I know of everyone else is being yourself is the only option for happiness. Even if it's scary, even if you think people are not going to embrace it, if you think people are going to judge you, if you think you're not going to succeed, whatever, you have to do what is going to give you the best shot at happiness because life is short and everything is hard and there's going to be ups and downs no matter what you do. So you might as well spend a little bit more time doing something that gives you a better possible return on your investment in this life. So yeah, that's that's all I got for you today, but I will see you back here same time next week. Thank you so much for everything. Um I'm just psyched to have have the space to chat with you and and share and as always leave any questions you have in the comments or you can DM them to me on the she her they Instagram. Any topics you want to chat about, happy to do it. Would love to. So send me a note there and I'll see you back next week. Bye.